is. I got it. Right at the interchange, full speed. It's. Oh yeah. Okay. Thank you. There's a ton of ton of cops there. Riverside. Uh, so I'm telling you, it's now Riverside. That's the pursuit there. We'll be on it here shortly. Yeah, Catherine. I'm ready when you are, yeah. You want the map or no map? Okay, Catherine, I copy that, thank you. We're about to go live. Tim, one more time. Okay. Chuck and Colin, this, this pursuit has been going on for at least an hour. It has been taking place in the Temecula area and parts south of there along the 15 freeway. Right now, we're currently eastbound 60, I'm sorry, westbound 60 freeway from the 91. You see that uh, gray truck there, that's the pursuit vehicle. The uh, Riverside County Sheriff's have been in, in pursuit of this vehicle. The want on this is for the driver being armed. Now, we don't know if it's a male or female, but I can tell you that during this pursuit, the driver dropped off several passengers that happened at uh, that happened uh, along the 15 freeway at Rancho California. Uh, those people have been taken into custody, but at this point, the driver is continuing to failure failure to yield. I should say, continuing westbound on the 60 here, at times reaching high speeds and using the center divider in the side of the road to pass. Now the uh, officers did try a couple of spike strips at times during this chase. They were not able to get that spike strip in place or the, the driver was able to go around the spike strip. So at this point, it has made a lot of progress from all the way down uh, as far south as uh, Escondido. It came back northbound on the 15 from there and has made its way up here now into Rubido. Yeah, definitely, and there's quite a bit of traffic out here, Colleen, westbound on the 60. Uh, you just came through the Moreno Valley. There was a lot of traffic on that 15 interchange onto the 60, and now starting to slow down a little bit because of that traffic. But there are many, many officers in trail. I'll come out to a wide shot and show you the California Highway Patrol is tracking this pursuit along with the uh, Riverside County Sheriff's. You see all the units here in trail. In fact, we had a hard time finding the pursuit uh, once we got on scene because there were so many officers in trail in this pursuit. So at this point, westbound 60 freeway from the 91. That's right, Chuck. So that's the big question mark on this pursuit is how much fuel is left on this truck. Again, at least an hour into this pursuit and it looked like for a time it was going all the way south into San Diego, but then that's when the driver reversed course at Deer Springs Road and came back northbound. Well, you're going to have uh, the Chino area uh, in the uh, not too distant fu uh, future here. It's going to be the 15 freeway that the driver will come upon and will have options there. So uh, at this point still uh, Harupa is the area right now as the driver continues 90 miles an hour the CHP saying we're, we're tracking about 84 miles an hour the, gr uh, the crews on the ground there the CHP and the sheriffs are tracking it about uh, 90 miles an hour they're saying
We're hearing it's a Toyota, and uh, at this point, we're not sure how many more people are left inside the truck other than the driver. As I said, we, we did hear that some passengers did exit the vehicle and were taken into custody. You got to look here as I doubled in here. You can see the driver through the window there slightly. It looks like he's got the top portion of the window open. Looks like he might be wearing a ball cap. You could probably see it better than I do, but uh, that's, the, that's the story right now. We don't really see anybody else in there as of yet. You know, they had two uh, Riverside County Sheriff helicopters overhead. One had to pull off for fuel, so they definitely have that going on. And the California Highway Patrol will likely launch their helicopter at some point uh, and uh, help in that pursuit effort. But right now, they're staying behind it. Let me come out wide and look at the units in trail. They're staying on it. They're not going into tracking mode of any sort. And again, the want is for the uh, driver being armed. We don't. We haven't heard if it's stolen or not, but uh, there was talk that the, the driver may have tried to uh, ram officers at one point during the chase. We're trying to confirm that. We just saw an item being tossed out the window. The driver just threw something out the window there. But again, uh, the driver continuing 90. We're, we're looking at 95 miles an hour right now. That's what we heard, Colleen, earlier. It was at uh, Rancho California Road and the 15 freeway, and that puts uh, the driver, or that puts uh, the driver in the middle of the pursuit area where we were hearing about it, uh, when we were first learning about it, I should say, uh, down near the 15-215 uh, interchange. Yeah, that's a good question. You know, they, they might be able to because they have so many units in this pursuit, and uh, they definitely will be working a traffic break, although the speeds are fast enough to where the driver's passing other vehicles, so it might make it a difficult task to pick up that item. Okay, yeah, that, that uh, you know, I really can't see that in my monitor right now, but yeah, I, be I believe that uh, the driver at these rates of speed has been going in and out of traffic. You see him passing a car there. Uh, I, I wouldn't doubt that he's putting on his uh, flash. Oh yeah, I see it now in his rear uh, lights there. So yeah, definitely uh, letting people know at least that he's on his way towards them. Could be. Well, that's the uh, 15 interchange right there. The uh, Yeah, just crossed the westbound 60, committed to that, and uh, now in the uh, Chino area, and the driver still hard on the gas. Let me come out wide again and show you the officers behind the traffic ahead of the pursuit. You see some cars merging there, so uh, there is some traffic. Uh, it's not as heavy as it was on the 215 freeway, but there is quite a few cars out here right now. That's a, that's a really good question, Chuck. I haven't heard if they know the name of the driver or the person that, that's wanted here in this truck. Uh, we did hear some information, but we can't report it. We're trying to, we're trying to get some more information as to uh, exactly what the uh, want, other than being armed, uh, we're trying to get confirmation from uh, the leading agency on what the uh, uh, other wants might be. But definitely we heard a possibility that the driver at one point tried to ram or tried to assault officers uh, with either the vehicle or some other object. As fast as possible, and this driver's being very lucky right now as, as uh, he doesn't really have a lot of heavy traffic up ahead. The traffic, I'm looking out through the front windshield of our chopper here in Bravo, and we're seeing uh, the traffic moving pretty well up here, freeway speeds.
Car Carolyn, that's right. Look at that. All the way across lanes. And then uh, because there's some traffic maybe a, a little bit slower up ahead, he's decided to use the shoulder to pass or the slow lane. So he's really hard on the gas. 80 miles an hour we're tracking. And he's starting to hit the brakes here because he's getting into a little bit of traffic as he weaves in and out. There's an officer he's going to blow right by. That looked like a local officer. Uh, it might have been an Ontario PD officer. We'll see uh, if we hear anything on that. But again, look at this, all the way across lanes, weaving in and out. So that's been the uh, story on this pursuit all along, especially down south when it was in Temecula. He was using the shoulder. He used old uh, Highway 395 at one point to uh, evade officers. But again, just continuing to drive erratic and trying desperately to get away. It is because not only is he passing all these vehicles, those officers have to deal with those un or those uh, vehicles as they pass. And a lot of times drivers don't know what's going on until they hear the lights and sirens and they start hitting the brakes. So the officers have a heavier task to dodge those cars as they start to slow down. We're not 100% on that. We, we haven't heard confirmation on that. We're waiting word, but it's certainly the want from what we're hearing from the airship overhead was that this driver is armed. It was definitely more than one we're hearing, but the number we're not sure of, if it was two, three, but uh, the truck I don't think would hold much more than three or four more uh, people other than the driver there. I, I was expecting that too, Chuck. I was expecting a lot of traffic, but westbound here, uh, I'm trying to look at the eastbound side. In fact, let me come out wide and show you. It's about the same both directions right now on the uh, 60. Uh, well, we have the uh, 71 freeway up ahead, and then beyond that, it's going to be the uh, 57 freeway. Uh, so that's what's ahead, but that's not for a while yet. We'll see what the options the, dri the driver decides to do. He could take that 71 south uh, back towards uh, the 91. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I, I personally have a Toyota truck and uh, I get about maybe 300 miles to the tank on that. And uh, and that's not driving at these speeds. So we'll see what happens if this driver is able to maintain if he had a full tank to begin with, he or she. It looks like it's a male driver. I'm going to come in tight again. Maybe you can get a better look. Uh, it looks like there's some movement going on there and I'll try to get a better focus for you. Uh, Yeah, and it looks like maybe a red mask or something red I can see. <laughs> maybe he picked up some debris. Yeah, maybe uh, some debris on the windshield there. The sun's in the driver's eye right now. I can tell you that because uh, we're we're flying the same direction and my pilot has the sun in his eyes. So it's uh, the same uh, circumstances for us up here as it is on the ground there for them. So that might be the reason for the wipers. You know, there's, there was quite a few at the uh, at the 215 and the 60 interchange. We were looking for the pursuit, and there were multiple cars. There were unmarked vehicles. I see three immediately there, and there's probably a couple of unmarked ones there uh, directly behind. But I would say there was at least eight, maybe nine vehicles in this pursuit. I'm looking up uh, up ahead here, and... 
It looks like the the westbound lanes are moving uh, pretty good. The eastbound lanes there are, are impacted by some traffic there. So, but right now it looks like it's free sailing all the way up to the 71. Yeah, look at that move right there. And yeah, so he's the speed's definitely uh, varying up here, but 80, 90 miles an hour seems to be the average. And he's coming up quickly on the 71, so we'll see what options there are for the driver here. He could certainly take that 71 uh, to the north to towards the 10 as well. Absolutely. Definitely in Chino now, and uh, it sounds like the CHP Baldwin Park is talking about the pursuit coming their way right now into their area. So we'll see if uh, how much CHP is involved in this pursuit or if they uh, take it over or not. It looked like some, yeah, maybe some paper. Uh, I'm not sure what it was. It came out very fast, so it was light. It definitely could be. I mean, if the driver knows that there's multiple units behind and they're trying to pick up any evidence, that'll definitely pull some of them out of the pursuit. But at this speed, it might be difficult with all the traffic on the freeway for those officers. Here comes another object, maybe. Well, I got the bridges here, so. He's waving uh, something out the window there. Let's see what it is. He's waving them on. He's like encouraging the uh, officers. And while well, we're seeing uh, a gesture there, so we won't show that. That's right. That's right. So we'll stay away from that for now. But it looked like he, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. No, no, he wasn't. And there it is again. Yeah, so it looks like he's trying to wave on the officers, maybe even waving to us up here in the chopper, saying, I'm not giving up. Let's keep this going. He's kind of waving, uh, encouraging the officers that he's going to just keep it going. That's, that's the impression I got out of that. And now he's in the slow lane, slowing down here quite a bit. Let's see what happens. Past the 71 freeway, so that's not an option. He's staying uh, westbound 60. So we're going to have the uh, 57. We're going to be into Diamond Bar shortly, and we'll see what happens on the 57. That's right. Now, if he stays in this lane, he's going to stay westbound 60. But still, we have that interchange up uh, for a couple more miles ahead of this driver. So there he is, waving with his hand now out the window pretty calm and uh, casual about it. Yeah, both hands out the window now, so no. And you see how he's drifting there. So he might be trying to drive with his leg, his knee maybe steering it across. Uh, lanes there side to side, so you might be trying to do a little fancy driving there. But at these speeds, you don't want to take any chance. We're, we're looking at 95 miles an hour. Yeah, it's, it's very dangerous. Not at all. Not at all. It's, it, it's definitely ramping up, I would say. He's dropped off, and in fact, he's kind of side-by-side uh, side with this uh, this other car there in the slow lane. That one's kind of keeping pace for a minute there, and now he's pulling away. He's going to get behind that truck. Might be exiting. Let's see. Might be taking the exit here. Yes. It looks like he's going to com be committed here, and I'll get you the exit here. And, uh, well, it's got a long off-ramp. It's going to be... 
is Diamond Bar. Diamond Bar Boulevard, northbound turn now. Diamond Bar Boulevard, north from the 60 freeway. So this, yeah, I, I believe so. I think this might even take him all the way up to the 10, if that's the case. We'll see what happens here. He's going to make a left turn, maybe a U-turn. He's going to make a U-turn, maybe back towards the, the uh, 60 freeway. So here he goes, U-turn, and we're going to make our turn as well. And he'll have a straight shot at the uh, 60 freeway uh, westbound again, or, or even eastbound, I believe. Yeah, definitely a good choice to do that right now. And uh, he was thinking about that on-ramp there, I believe, and decided not to. So he might try to go back the other direction, but the other direction, eastbound 60, is going to be a lot of traffic, as you see right there. Yes. I'll tell you what, this is not good because all that traffic right now, eastbound 60, it's backed up. So he's going to have to use the shoulder or the center divider to pass, and he's done that in this pursuit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and it's like this for quite a few miles. So um, this is going to be very dangerous, especially for anybody that stopped in that uh, emergency lane there. Yeah, eastbound 60 right now, approaching Golden Springs. There he goes onto the shoulder, into the dirt even there. So that big rig truck may be forcing him into that dirt. But uh, again, look at the traffic is basically stopped on this freeway right now. They do. Let me come out and you see them right there in trail. You know, the, the problem with this pursuit is they really can't, go into a tracking mode. I mean, they can do it if they wanted to, but being that the, the driver's armed, and look at that move all the way over, all the way across. So they're, they're likely not going to pull off this chase uh, and leave it to the airship. They're going to stay on this uh, to the, for the duration. It, look, it looks like he certainly could in this truck. Uh, in mine, it's an older older truck and uh, doesn't really go all that fast. The newer ones tend to have more uh, horsepower in them. But as you saw in that move there, the officer's having a difficult time. The driver basically pulling him out of the shoulder into the freeway lanes. You see that officer there in the uh, carpool lane and then one in, right behind him. So that's how they're going to work this. They're going to work it uh, in, in the lanes that are most open and try to stay pace with the driver. You know, we've seen other agencies, especially uh, in other in other uh, states, do that. They'll try to box him in in the front and the back. But because this driver is said to possibly be armed, they don't want to take any chances like that. They did, and in fact, this might be a good opportunity for a spike strip because he's limited to the shoulder or the center divider. It could be an option for officers, but again, it's a dangerous one because of uh, the officers having to be out there and deploy it when he passes. I'm trying to look and see. I, I They'll definitely do that. In fact, the surrounding agencies knows that this pursuit's coming through their area, and they will definitely assist. The California Highway Patrol will certainly assist in doing that to keep uh, other drivers off the uh, on-ramps. But at this point, I'm not really able to see. It's on my pilot side of the helicopter, and uh, I cannot see any uh, units up ahead. I'll come out to a wider shot here and see if we see anybody. Uh, I'm hearing information that truck might have hit that big rig when he went into the shoulder, into the dirt. There might have been a, a impact there with the big rig. There, I hear the CHP talking about that. For sure. And 
So the California High Patrol now saying uh, speeds at uh, about 40 miles an hour. Uh, I need to take care of one thing real quick here, just momentarily. Stand by one. I'm back with you guys. It looks like he has exited right at the 71, I believe this is. Uh, we are looking at an exit here, and he's going to go north, it looks like. He's going to come back underneath the freeway. And we'll see here in a second if he's going to go back the other way. This, is, I believe, is Gary Avenue, northbound Gary from the 60 freeway. And he's going to go past the uh, options here for the freeway. So he's going to stay on Gary and continue northbound. Well, let's see. They were going to be Pomona. I believe this is West Pomona at the very edges of uh, Pomona right now. Yeah, I, I don't put it past this driver to try to go opposite lanes of uh, traffic to get away. And uh, we'll see what happens, though. The units are there, airships overhead. And for now, at least the driver's uh, driving at normal speeds. Yeah, uh, Carolyn, I was going to say, maybe that's a fuel situation. Maybe he's trying to conserve at this point now. In that turn pocket, let's see what he does, or she does it. I believe it's a male driver at this point, and he's going to go right through the traffic light there and continue northbound on Gary. I think any east or westbound major street can take him back to the 71 for sure. If he stays northbound here, he's going to hit the the 10 freeway. So, uh, that but that's still for about another mile and a half at least, two miles maybe. Yes. Oh boy, let me see here. Uh, yeah, I want to say it was around five or maybe a little after that. And like I said, it had been going a while. It looked like the pursuit was going to go into San Diego. In fact, it did uh, into San Diego County, the northern sections of it, but then turned around. In fact, it got all the way down to Deer Springs Road and then made a U-turn. Well, that's when a second uh, Riverside Sheriff's helicopter joined in with the pursuit. And that, now they've taken over that from the first one that went for fuel. So it, it's made a lot of progress. It's covered a lot of ground, I should say, um, and uh, but mostly along that 15 freeway. Uh, just south of the 215 freeway is kind of the area where this pursuit started, uh, and it's been well over an hour now. No, and that could be why the drivers uh, decided to go surface street slower. Uh, to to prolong this and stretch it out as much as the as much as the driver can. Looking back over his shoulder there, yeah. Let me come. Let's come back in and, and closer because we have the sun going into his window here. And let's take a look at uh, the driver there. You can see the hat. He's waving. Again. That's right, Chuck. We were covering that that time, and uh, it was unbelievable to see that. I don't think at this point the driver's thinking about doing that because the officers are right on his tail. And <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes, definitely. Just ran a red light, number one lane. 
35 miles an hour, they're saying, and the driver continuing here north on Gary, approaching Mission Boulevard, and now the freeway, the 10 freeway is up ahead, another, maybe another mile. We'll see if they try a pit maneuver here, I don't know. He saw that officer creep up and maybe he thought, oh, oh they're gonna try a pit, but there he goes, hard on the gas, 60, maybe 60 miles an hour there at, at one point, coming back in and uh, he's gonna continue north on Gary. So the freeway uh, now about a half a mile, look at that move all the way across lanes, wrong side of the road, very dangerous because look at all the traffic coming his way. Back over, wow. Right turn, looks like right turn. This is gonna be uh, Holt, yes. So eastbound Holt from Gary. And I'm gonna, Absolutely, I brought the map back in so you can see the speeds here. We're using right down, using the uh, double yellows to pass. They're very dangerous. A lot of traffic on hold right now. Wrong side of the road around that red car. So dangerous, unbelievable. I'll give you a little bit more nose room here so you can see wrong side of the road into the intersection here. He's going to swing right around that car in the center of the street. Look at the officers. They're dropped way back, the out of safety sake, and they're going to make their way through the intersection. But the driver now has a little bit of a head start. Can't get away from the airship overhead, though. Yeah, it's, it's actually a southbound turn. You're right, Chuck. It's going to be a reservoir, I believe. And now a eastbound turn into a neighborhood, I believe it is. And uh, this is going to be uh, Hawthorne. Uh, it's going to be, it started in the uh, Temecula area. It was Temecula, yeah. Here's a northbound turn on Lorraine. And we we'll, should be come back out onto Holt here momentarily let me come out wide and you can see the officers there still in pursuit he's got that stop he's going to decide which way to go he's going to go westbound now back the other way nope he's going to hit the brakes nope and then back again another item it looked like some paper that came out but here is the Exactly, and you can see the confusion on the street there. The officer is trying to navigate the, all the cars here, and he's going to be continuing westbound, Holt, and we'll um, be coming up to Gary once again, so we'll see what happens at Gary. Again, like I said, uh, if he makes a right-hand turn, he's going to have the uh, freeway, the 10 freeway, uh, as an option. If he goes back left, it'll be the uh, 60 freeway, but not for several miles. Yes, and it looks like San Antonio northbound. Uh, I believe there's an on-ramp for San Antonio to the 10. We'll see what happens, but the 10, again, about a mile, three quarters of a mile, but no, he goes into a neighborhood once again. You see the airship overhead tracking, and he's gonna go into this neighborhood. It looks kind of quiet in there. He's gonna make a right turn. And he's gonna head back towards uh, back towards Holt again. No, he's gonna go into this neighborhood. So this might be an, an area the driver knows because of uh, the fact that he got off the 60, made his way into these neighborhoods, and uh, now, well, it looks like an alleyway. So again, the airship overhead can track this driver very easily. The ground units having to navigate all the traffic down there. And of course, in a quiet neighborhood, uh, it's always dangerous to see if anyone's gonna be on foot. Eastbound now, this is gonna be Kingsley, and he's got some speed bumps in these streets, so that'll slow him down for sure. That's true, there was a guy right there in the alleyway standing next to his car. 
So, yeah, you're right. He can go down an alleyway and have no out, and then he's trapped. So that's a good point. He may or may not know this area very well, and looks like maybe he wandered in here. It's hard to say. Wrong side of the road. Ah, oh, look at that. Oh, man, that that great car, that truck's turning. Oh, and he caused that accident right there. That that truck that truck saw the, the guy coming, tried to get out of the way, and the other car swerved into that truck. So fortunately, they were going slow enough that they didn't, it didn't look like they were uh, going to be injured too much there, but he caused that accident. Yeah, for sure. So other than the uh, truck and, and then this one, I don't know if there was any uh, instances before we got on the pursuit, although there was talk that there was some sort of a possible assault with a deadly weapon on an officer. We're still working to get that information and confirm that. But here he is hard on the gas northbound on Indian Hill. And definitely Indian Hill has an on-ramp to the uh, 10 freeway. And if, at these speeds, he'll be there very shortly. Yeah, and if, if that's the case, that's going to be the uh, reason why they're staying on it. Look at that, so dangerous, right down the double yellows there, and he's going to come up to the 10 freeway very quickly here. But, yeah, that'll, that'll definitely confirm why certain tactics aren't being used and why uh, certain things are happening. Ah. Uh. left turn so he did not choose to get on the freeway there but he's westbound on uh, on San Jose right now away from uh, yes really did did pick up speed and we're going to continue here as uh, well, I believe there's going to be an option for the driver to get on the freeway once again so he passed the 10 bypassed the 10 but can get right back on it if he makes a left turn Yeah, fortunately, uh, the, the CHP reporting 45 miles an hour right now as the driver continues westbound. And we'll see what happens as the driver gets closer uh, towards the west here, and we'll have some options coming up. Definitely, mm -hmm. go ahead. Northbound. Well, that's great. We got that information now, and we, uh, we can report that for sure. We were uh, hearing that all, all the while, but we had to get confirmation for sure. And that's why there's, there's such concern with the officers. That's why there's such an urgent need to get this guy stopped and in custody and why they won't uh, approach and do certain things. Even a pit maneuver is out of the question in, in that case, especially if they know the driver's armed. Well, definitely uh, the, the municipal agencies in this area will know. In fact, the, the L.A. County sheriffs will uh, be notified, if not, they, if not already, because we're very close to the uh, Pomona Fairgrounds right now and uh, moving into this uh, area right now. This is Arrow Highway right now, and uh, we'll try to get you more of a cross street in a second. Yeah, just to the uh, just to the east side of uh, the the fairgrounds, and you see the driver there weaving in and out of traffic, desperate desperate to get away. Ugh. That was Bonita northbound on Arrow uh, through Bonita. Oh man, I believe this is now San Dimas. We're moved into San Dimas uh, near Laverne as well.
Let me come out a little bit and see the, well, you're, that's a good point. They've uh, backed off quite a bit. Let me ask my pilot if he sees any units there out his side, and it looks like he's saying no. They pulled back, so they're, they're allowing the uh, airship to track now. And I'm uh, using that shoulder to pass. Now we got the two the 210 freeway up ahead now, so we'll see what happens if the uh, driver can uh, continue on this road and get there. Uh, it's just another mile and a half before the 210 freeway. Catherine, the map, it's not working right. Left turn. Hey, uh, Catherine from Gill. Um, I'm rebooting the map again to try to get it to operate once more. Southbound turn. The pursuit is continuing here. This is uh, Laverne, or uh, San Dimas, I, I should say. Our Simon Desk has gotten word that this is uh, the one on this from the California Highway Patrol. They're saying is a person wanted for murder and assault with a deadly weapon on a police officer. He's going to go uh, westbound. Just do a pedal turn, Chris, when you got it. And there he goes under us right now. I do, Tim. We're trying to move the helicopter over there. I got it. I got it. That's it. To the right. Make a right. On the southbound on the major ahead of us. Go full speed to it. Catherine, are we still streaming? Oh, look at that close call! Almost got hit by that car. He's going to go eastbound. He's going. He's going east. Tim or uh, Casey. Here's the pursuit. So you have it. See the industrial buildings. Look for it out your door at 1 o'clock. Copy. Thank you. Once again, uh, we're back with you. Sorry about the technical problems up here in News Chapter 4 Bravo. We're back on the pursuit here at eastbound on, uh, gr well, I believe it's Grove here. He's going to make a... Well, nope, he's not going to make a right. Yes, he is. He's going to go down the wrong way on the street. He's going southbound on the northbound lanes of town. Made a turn, a right turn into the turn pocket, a right turn pocket, no less. And he's going to continue southbound on town. He's going to go right down the center, divider, wrong side of the road again, added a signal coming up here. That's Arrow. He's going to make a right-hand turn onto Arrow. You see the uh, units there in trail. It looks like it might be local police that are now in pursuit. Westbound on Arrow. Coming up on Gary, westbound arrow. Coming up on Gary, we got the intersection there. He's got nowhere to go. He goes right through there. That Fortunately, that car turned. Now he's going to go wrong 
uh, actually back the other direction, eastbound on arrow. The speeds are ramping up, slowing down, speeding up. Uh, highway Patrol saying about 90 miles an hour at times on surface streets. Right now about uh, slowing back down to normal speeds. is going to make a right-hand turn. That's why you see the unit there going southbound on town again. And you have a lot of traffic on the northbound lanes. Car pulling out there, you gotta swerve around that. The driver wanted for a murder and assault with a deadly weapon on a police officer, as well as possibly being armed. So the uh, pursuit, very dangerous, not only from the driving, but the from the uh, perspective of the driver having a weapon, possibly having a weapon and being a uh, person wanted for murder. Here he goes, wrong side of the road, desperate to get away. Look at this, he's been doing this on surface streets here all along in Pomona. Here comes a uh, unit right behind him switching the, the lead there, that uh, covered pickup truck it looks like. Hard on the gas and the big question is how much fuel is left in this truck? as they uh, continue on surface streets here in Pomona. Right hand turn, gonna go eastbound, Arrow Highway. Here he goes into a neighborhood. Once again, we've seen this uh, many times here well, once he exited the 60 freeway and now he's moving on uh, Yorkshire right now. Into an alleyway. So we've seen this driver go multiple alleyways and into a parking lot here. Let's see if he has an out. He does, he's gonna go out onto the major there He's got a car coming through there. That might be another officer. Let's see. Yes, it was. Northbound town. That was the AutoZone parking lot he went through. Here he goes, wrong direction, wrong side of the road, car diving out of the way, through the tracks, and he's going to go northbound in the southbound lanes. He's going to stay in those lanes. No reason to do that. He's going to stay that way. Oh, this is terrible. Right by those cars that are stopped there. Oh, man, people trying to get out of the way. He's just ramming his way through. He didn't hit any of those cars. It didn't look like it. But really close calls there as he uses the shoulder on the wrong direction of the road. Here he comes. Oh, right behind that white car. So many close calls here. you got to feel bad for these people. They don't know what's going on. All of a sudden, here comes a wrong way driver at him. So terrifying as we watch this guy just stay on the wrong side of the road for no apparent reason he is. He has open lanes there uh, right by those other cars there under those trees. Wow. Just no reason for this. This is so reckless. There he goes setting up. He's going to go. No, nope. yep, he is. He's going to go fly past the street. That's fine. Don't slide to one side or the other, Chris. Not right over. It's, we're gonna we're gonna tumble the camera again. Slide left if you can. It's gonna tumble. Of 
Hold here and let it pass us. Hold here and let it pass us. Up on the sidewalk, look at that move. Up onto the sidewalk and then through onto the wrong side of the road, going northbound turn, make a right. This is Gary, he's gonna go northbound towards the 210 freeway. You saw him jump up onto the sidewalk. Unbelievable move there as he had traffic ahead of him. Hard on the brakes. Might be coming to an end here. Let's see. No, he's going to try to U-turn. Southbound, it looked like he may have stopped there for a second, but now he's back southbound on Gary. You see the units in trail. Quite a few of them remaining in his pursuit. Wrong side of the road. High speed there. We have an hour and 20 minutes, hour and 20. through that intersection, southbound. That was Foothill now. Fortunately, the driver's staying on the proper side of the road, but what a dangerous situation for this driver to come at vehicles on the wrong side of the road at times. Southbound Gary continuing. Through the tracks once again and you're gonna come up onto another uh, major up ahead. You can see the people out of the cars in the intersection, not a safe thing to do there. You see the canine unit there and that, that officer right behind him. We'll see if they try a pit. I don't know if they will or not, we'll see. Uh, it's such a dangerous situation to get into. On, on Pine Street now, northbound. It's going to go eastbound there and along the tracks. Keep coming right, keep coming right. Yeah. Okay, southbound on Gary, fly forward. The slowest I think we've seen this pursuit, six miles an hour. He's gotten around and behind some of the officers in that turn there. Chris, I need you to fly the pursuit. I need you to fly the car. I want you to slide left if you can, Chris. We got a lot of room there. Southbound Gary through Laverne.
more paper, more items coming out of the window. It's got the 10 freeway right ahead. And the question is how much fuel is left in this truck? And we'll see if the 10 freeway will be an option or it could be the indicator that he doesn't really want to get on the freeway if he's low on fuel. Underneath the 10 right now, we'll see uh, which direction or how he pops out of here. Continuing southbound there past the 10. More items out the window. Southbound Gary coming up to Holt. We've been here before. But the speeds certainly have slowed down. It's an indication for sure that this driver is either toying with the officers or is low on fuel. More items being tossed out of the car. Additional items coming out the passenger side. A bunch of items look like a bag full of trash maybe tossed out at the officers in trail. Eastbound hold, approaching town. That was a town in Adobe. Eastbound Holt and uh, approaching the Adobe lane right now. You see the driver as we come in a little tighter. You can see the items in his hand. He looks like he wants to throw out some more items. Right turn into a, let's see what this is, a shopping center. He's gonna go through parked cars there and he's going to go into right up to the 99 cent store people coming out not knowing what's going on he hit that truck he clipped that truck in the back he's going to continue out towards the west here this is Paloma I believe did tap that vehicle that was parked there splitting the cars the uh, police units there and he's going to go back eastbound More items being tossed out. High rate of speed. So now he was just toying with the officers because he hits the gas. 70 miles an hour, 75 miles an hour, they're calling it on the uh, scanner there. So approaching reservoir. He's going to make a right turn there by some people that were standing in the street. Those people need to get off the streets because it, uh, he almost uh, clipped them. He makes a turn into another, yet another alleyway. And look at that. Let me see if there's someone in the seat or if the seat's red. I see something red in the chair there. It looks like it might be empty. It might be a seat cover. He's gonna go southbound. Westbound Hawthorne from Reservoir. South, southbound turn. 
And then a uh, westbound turn. So through this neighborhood, weaving in and out. Westbound on Monterey. There's a person on the sidewalk running away. Another person in a parking lot having to jump out of the way. Holt in San Antonio, another shopping center here. He's driving right through over the speed bumps at a high rate of speed. He's going to go right turn around that truck. You got people on foot in this parking lot. Very dangerous situation. Here he goes, hitting the gas there. Car coming in. He's going to go through, tra uh, through parked cars there and through the stalls back towards the direction he's coming. Look at that person there having to go around away from away from the truck he's going to go through. There's a bunch of cars trying to get in here to do their shopping. People trying to do their shopping. He's going to go into a gas station here. He's going to go through the pumps even. People on foot running around. It's such a dangerous situation. This driver not afraid to do stuff like this. Oh, he's going to go right against that truck and he hits the truck. That might be it. That truck was trying to make a right-hand turn. That semi-truck trying to make a turn. He's backed up. He's trying to go forward. We'll see. That might be it. That looks like there's heavy damage to the truck. That big rig trying to back up and get out of the way. It's a very dangerous situation for that truck driver. He's going to try to pull forward. He's got damage to his front end there in that big rig bringing it to an end with a collision as the driver tried to turn out wrong direction. That truck was making a right-hand turn off a Holt. And it looks like now they're going to try to pin the driver in here and move the, uh, their unit right up against the bumper. That truck will not be able to go anywhere. It looks like the airbags deployed on that impact. It looks like an airbag hanging out the passenger side. You see all the units here. I'll come out to a wide shot and you see how many units were in this chase trying to get this driver to stop? Finally, a big rig collision here. Looks like it's brought it to uh, bring it to an end. I'm hearing the scanner. The big rig driver is out of harm's way. He got out of the truck. But the driver in the pursuit vehicle, that truck, the pickup truck, is still in the driver's seat, even though the airbags deployed on that collision. Now we're coming around to the driver's side and we'll take a look at the damage to the truck, uh, the pickup truck. It looks like the side airbags went off. Heavy damage to the front end of the truck. Let's hold right here, okay. Fire department is staging nearby as the police deal with the driver right now who's refusing to come out. They did get the uh, big rig driver out safely of that big rig. They brought in that first unit, that uh, canine unit there that brought it right up against the bumper of the truck so it cannot back up. He was trying to back up and here we got movement. It looks like the driver with maybe his hands out the door or the window So there is movement from the driver. We'll see if the driver comes out the window. No, here comes the door. It's opening up, and we will keep the wide shot here to see uh, what happens. Driver coming out slowly, has the door open. He 
slowly coming out. Driver showing his hands. Slowly making his way to his feet. Showing his hands, but not really moving uh, the way the officers would like him to. It might be injured from that collision. There he goes, hands up. And slow to move from away from that truck. Again, it's unclear if there's any passengers on board. Earlier in the pursuit, there was uh, at least one, two, maybe three people that came out of it. There he goes to his knees. So the officers are going to be very careful. The windows are tinted on that uh, Toyota truck. The driver making his way to the ground, complying with officers, slowly crawling away from the vehicle. And you see there... Let's hold here, Chris. The, that pole's going to get in the way. We're hearing now that there is a passenger with the hands out the window. Slide right. So there is an additional person inside the truck. At least one other, other than the driver. We see the hands out on the passenger side window there. So confirming what we're hearing on the uh, police scanner. He's going to crawl his way over to officers. That's the driver there. And they're going to take that driver in custody. It looks like the driver uh, might be injured in his leg. They're going to cover the other officers there and take him into custody. Here's the shot. And now it'll be the focus on the passenger or passengers inside the truck. On the left-hand side of your screen, you're seeing the officers in taking the driver in custody, now ordering the passenger to exit the vehicle. We'll see what happens if the driver or the passenger is able to get out that side or possibly exit the driver's side. Slide right, Chris, if you can. Slide right if you can. Keep going right. The door's open now. Passenger door open. That's good. Right there. Thank you. Here comes the passenger slowly out of the pickup truck. The driver there on the ground on the left-hand side of the screen is in custody. Passenger now, it looks like it's a female in the red jacket. She's definitely complying with officers or she's gonna walk her way back towards them and she will be in custody momentarily, but the next question is, is there any more people? Are there any more people inside that pickup truck? We know of uh, several we heard uh, that were let off early on in the pursuit in the Temecula area.
Male driver, female passenger in custody now. They're walking her back and put her in one of the vehicles now. They will make call outs uh, for any additional people inside the pickup truck. Let's slide right again. And I want to keep an eye on the driver, Chris. It looks like they're going to need the uh, paramedics to come in to check on the driver, uh, the, the perceived vehicle. They do have them in custody. They're right behind the grand gas sign. Here comes the units in the meantime to clear the vehicle. They're going to check to make sure no one else is inside. All the airbags deployed. You see that on that collision. The cab is clear. Of course, they're going to check the uh, the rear of the truck and, and open that up. But it looks like at this point, this pursuit's over. Passenger and the driver in custody. A female passenger, male driver on the ground. Uh, they're going to roll in the paramedics to, to uh, check on that driver. Holt in San Antonio Avenue is where this came to an end. And you see all the units here that were in this chase and additional units that were added near the end. You see a large uh, area that's been cordoned off by tape and a lot of people out here on the street. This ended near uh, a busy market. You see a lot of people across the street here uh, are watching this all unfold before them. Stopping car chases happening across Southern California. Subscribe here. Thanks for watching. The chase is on.